So um, I guess I've got a couple of projects to talk about. I should probably say a bit about who I am um, because I'm not usually on the live streams. So I used to be an environment artist and now I'm product owner. So it means most of my time is spent uh, managing JIRAs and answering emails, but sometimes I get to have fun and look at concept art. And I'll go through some of the artwork that we've done for the River of Blood quest now. So in this folder, this is just some of the concept art that we got commissioned um, for, the, for the ghouls. So we knew we wanted to update them. We knew we wanted to move them because they were basically right where something happens in the quest that I can't really spoil too much, but we kind of thought, well, if we're going to move them and move them into a new graveyard, we should do a, give them a bit of a lick of paint as well. So um, this is artwork from uh, Mod Yan, who's done an awesome job, very freaky, very scary, um, also some crazy variations. And so this went through a couple of designs, and basically once the concept art gets signed off, then uh, it goes over to uh, our modelers, uh, so Mod Demo is the character modeler in the Guardians team. And he basically started off with uh, sculpting it. So I just happen to have this in ZBrush, um, just so you can see. So all of our higher detail NPCs would usually start off in ZBrush, where we could sculpt out the basic, um, the basic shape and form. Um, this is quite nice, there's um, detail here that we can use to take uh, um, into our texture maps, which is pretty good. So this is an example of the, um, the first ever step. Once, basically start off with the concept art, then the next step would be moving into blocking out the main shape in ZBrush or Max. Um, I can probably show you this inside of Max as well, um, if I just... So what you're seeing here is a quick, it's a graphical, this is a part of MapHead, which I'll go on to in a minute. Um, if I load up the ghoul, um, I can basically show this one here in Max. Just wait for it to load. There we go. So basically, Moldemo would uh, take the base sculpt from ZBrush and then create a low poly version uh, in Max and then refine the texture as well. So we're looking at about almost 3,000 polys for this, which is pretty cool. Um, and this is a nice example of where we'd spend slightly longer on the texture map, make sure the texture is really cool. And I think Damon did a fantastic really job cool. of this. Really cool. I was going to, I was going to do that, and I thought maybe I shouldn't. So, thanks. <laughs> so yeah. So this is um, a cool example of the the base ghoul. And then we thought, well, we wanted to actually add some more content to the ghouls as well, not just a graphical update. So um, we decided to also do the devourer as well. Went to the same thing where we go back to the concept art guys and we say can we have like a you know an amped up version of it as well Jan did this scared us quite a lot but we thought it's worth doing so um, we did the same thing and basically um, modified I think with this one um, Damo took the base mesh and then um, only inside of Max rejigged it so that it was the tougher version which is uh, quite cool and Max is basically, Max and ZBrush are the two, the two primary tools that our character artists would use. Um, you can see here he's slightly higher poly, but then because he's a larger NPC, um, we're allowed to go for slightly, um, slightly more detail. And it, he is obviously takes up quite a lot of screen space, so I think it is worth it. So that is an example of how the, um, the character art pipeline would work. And then basically it would be on to animation. We'd animate inside of our custom in-house animator package, which um, uh, Mod Stu, um, uh, Stu from The Watch showed um, a, a month or so ago. Um, and then basically put them into, into game. So um, let's have a quick look at the map editor tool. So over here, we've got MapEd which some of you might have seen before from previous streams, but I just thought I'd give a quick overview of uh, what it does and how we use it. So 
Um, we talked as a team about what we wanted to do for River of Blood, and we all agreed that Patadomus Temple just didn't really cut it. So um, we wanted to have a lot of the quests there. So let me just load it if I can remember the chord. So this, you guys have seen, it's already in game, came out as part of um, the update last week. Uh, sorry, this week. And here is Patadomus Temple. So what we've got here is, this is the, um, the Java view, where I can basically see everything in the, the Java game client. I can move things, I can put things around, uh, you know, I can uh, rejig the mapping and uh, basically move scenery and add blocking. And what we'll have done is basically worked on this building as a, a blue box first, where it's inc very simple, just very simple shapes in terms of um, where the actual building needs to be. Um, and then essentially just refine it once we got it in, uh, into place. So the real Patadomus was much smaller and much more over to, to the other side nearer that cliff. And we basically pushed it out so it overhangs the, almost overhangs the river a bit more. And we've got more of a logical um, ramp right up to it as well. So if I go back to Max, I can show you a chunk of the building that Alex has worked on. So basically, we would assemble um, all of the architecture in, as these kit pieces. Um, so it's basically a question of, this will have started off as a really simple corner piece, and then over the course of the project, we've refined it and add more detail, and then refine and add the textures. And then you can see the windows are a separate model, so they'd be put in. Um, I think we've got different examine options on the window, so you can actually find out who these people were, um, and if you want to find out more information. So, MapEd will let us do pretty much anything. Uh, I won't go through all of the features, um, but basically like I can change the heights, I can um, move buildings and move things around, add lights. But the interesting thing that I wanted to cover is we've basically got a brand new um, view inside of MapEd, which is the NXT view. So this is fantastically useful because it's basically a portal into the NXT engine. Um, and it's one of the things that is really useful is that there's absolutely, there's um, seamless um, editing. So, you, well, not editing, but I can basically go anywhere I want to. So currently here I'm flying around in Patadomus, but I could basically fly into any other map square, which is really, really useful because if we're checking bugs or if we want to just see how um, things are working on other map squares, it's just, you can pick up an Xbox controller and plug it in and then just fly around and just fly over the entire game world and know that what you're seeing is actually the same as what's in client. It means that if you're wanting to check things, it is going to be much faster than walking around as a player. And it means that you can sample other models and look at what the other environment settings are. Um, and it gives us a lot more freedom. Um, also, we've got a couple of things um, which are quite useful. Let me just turn off the overlays. Um, so uh, I can like turn off the textures, which I personally find very interesting. As other people might find this a bit boring, but essentially being able to look at our assets untextured means that if you're like looking for bugs, like with holes, or um, if you want to just look at things in a way that doesn't show any lighting, this is really useful. It just means that it's another uh, tool that makes our lives much easier. Also, um, you know, you can look at where the poly detail is. Like for instance, that cliff kit is maybe a bit too detailed you don't really walk up to it that much and maybe we could use the poly details there on other things that we've modeled instead um, but uh, but yeah this um, getting NXT in time for this quest um, has been really really cool because it means that we've sort of been walking around from Patadomus across Mauritania um, and this is part of the reason why we wanted to update um, Canifis as well um, so we thought, we looked at Canifis in NXT. You know, I'm going to turn the textures back on because it's a bit crazy. Um, we looked at Canifis in NXT and it didn't really, um, didn't really hold up. So that's why we decided to do a bit of a graphical update on it. Um, as that started as one of our TAP projects. Um, I, so this uh, TAP is our Thursday afternoon, well, it's actually Thursday all day where we'd be able to spend some Thursdays to just uh, do graphical improvement, well, do any projects, any kind of uh, extracurricular learning. And some of the projects that people do is uh, updates on older areas of the game. 
So um, one of the things I will cover is another graphical update which currently isn't live in game but is something that we're hoping to get into the Eastern Lands project. Um, so uh, you, everyone will have seen Patademus exterior. Um, what you won't have seen, we've also spent some time on the interior as well. So I'm going to go ahead and load it up if I can remember what map square it is. So 53154. So I'm not spoiling things too much when I say that there is some content that will take place in the basement, in the mausoleum. So again, this is one of the things that in NXT it maybe didn't look amazing, so we thought it was worth spending a little bit more time um, refining it and just making sure everything was working properly in, um, in NXT. So we did a, a very quick, a very relatively quick graphical update here. We've got some new models for the statues, um, slightly different layout, but it's essentially the same, just a slightly refined version. Um, one of the other areas, um, it's interesting actually in MapEd, I can see the columbarium from here, so I could just quickly like fly over to it. Um, so that's an area that we haven't updated, um, but it's just, it's, personally I find it very interesting that we can just fly anywhere inside of this tool. Um, one of the things that uh, Mod Titan used to do, rather than have lots of different maps spread across, um, you know, lots of different areas spread evenly across the game world, sometimes he would hide areas and that is kind of slightly efficient and also slightly crazy because it means that when we're looking for things like the library room, we can't find them always. Um, and so uh, you might find hidden up there is that's the library. So the library is actually on the same square as Patademus. Um, if you were to um, teleport to it, there'd be no loading time. Um, and here is a, another quick graphical update we've done just to update the lighting. Again, if you were to see this uh, before, if you check it out now, or currently it's, it's very, very dark and we've just brightened it up a little bit so it looks good in NXT and also consistent, more consistent with Java in terms of lighting. So those were the things that I wanted to quickly show Oh yeah, the ghoul cellar. I suppose I should, could show the ghoul cellar. Um, we realised we needed an area for the ghouls. Um, we didn't want to add like loads more ghouls, um, the, the ravenous ghouls, to the surface world. So we decided to make a very, very simple, very quick dungeon. Um, so this was something that was relatively quickly pieced together. And we thought, as well as actually being um, a holding area for the ghouls, um, it would also be a shortcut to the Slayer Tower. I've measured it is much faster. So if you were to walk into the Slayer Tower um, from the Lodestone, go through the uh, cellars because it is much, much faster. Um, so in the NXC view of MapEd, uh, NPCs aren't currently showing up, but if I was to use the Java version, then I can see the NPCs um, and like rebalance the lighting. So, I mean, one of the things that I could do is um, override the, the color grading, which would be crazy, but just to prove that I can do it, um, I can basically move the, uh, I'll just bring it onto the same screen. So we basically got full control over the, the lighting for it. So I could basically play around with the, the sun, make the sun any color, maybe not that one, that would be crazy. Um, and changed basically the, um, the ambient backlight to try and tweak the lighting and get it so it looks nice. Um, you can play with the fog as well. Um, sometimes the fog can be quite atmospheric, which is quite nice. Um, and then we also have this um, color grading as well, which we can put on top of it. There's loads of crazy different ones which um, we can play with basically would be a way of just the sort of, you know, the icing on a cake if you really wanted to bring out certain colors um, and, you know, like play, play with it so that like, uh, please, you know, you could lower just the reds or just the greens or make all of the blues stand out more. And we use it a lot for Elf City and it's basically another pass that we can throw over um, images, uh, maps to change the colors. So I think that's probably everything that I wanted to talk about on, that's a good one, um, but yeah. So that's probably everything that I wanted to talk about in terms of the Vampire Project. So what I'm going to do is close this and I'm going to switch streams to another project, um, the Easterland stream. So we don't actually have any content for it yet, uh, but we have been doing a tiny bit of R&D. So I'm just going to go ahead and work in this stream. Do, got to get rid of these things first. This is very exciting. Everyone loves Perforce. 
Um, but yeah, don't worry. So I'll just wait for that to um, change. Um, oh, one of the things actually I wanted to show was um, the, some early designs for the graveyard. So these were our first stage concepts for what the Mikey graveyard could look like. So the purple things, you know, having more flowers, we thought maybe um, wasn't, as, uh, wasn't as appropriate. And then we kind of thought, oh, maybe we could bring in the, you know, the Mikey, the sickle, so that it's more obviously part of the Mikey. Um, but we kind of thought it was maybe a bit weird as a, as a big 3D object. Um, so the bottom one was the design that we liked the most. Um, so that was the one that we iterated on. And then uh, the next design, this one here, it's, um, this is the, the, the final design that we wanted to go for with. Um, and you can see some slightly more detail from what the texture could look like here and how the sundial would work. And also we've got concepts for Patodomus as well. So I'll quickly go through this, um, just because there's a lot of nice concept art here. So this was our, our first pass in terms of we basically said, look, Patodomus, it doesn't look very good. Let's have a total reimagine of how it could look like. And this is awesome, um, really nice. It's, it's the only issue is quite detailed, and we were sort of worried that maybe this was going to be too high poly or too, um, too detailed for the engine. So we kind of went back a little bit and simplified it um, into kind of more like a, a, a traditional European castle, which I think works really well. Doesn't really quite sell the fact that it's a monastery, so we again sort of did some other designs. This one I think is great, looks really good. Maybe the, um, the columns you can see here, maybe it make it look a bit museum-y, but essentially we're happy with it, and this is kind of um, the direction that we agreed we wanted to go in. So we did some more refinements here and then we said oh yeah stained glass windows we should definitely make more of a thing of those can we actually have something with the stained glass windows and maybe tell a bit of a story with it and so this was the more sort of final design and then it was like well you know it's a saradamon temple there should be more saradamon colors and so just tweaking it like that and that that to me is like a uh, it's sort of the, the quintessential evolution of concept art where you start with something and kind of you know we talk and try and evolve um, and then iterate on it and end up with something that we can then uh, model and put in game so I think that is probably everything from um, vampires. Um, let's talk about the Easternlands project. Hey, check out all of these islands. There are way too many. Um, everyone has probably seen this already. These are all of the different regions of the Ark. Um, uh, let's have a look at some crazy names. Um, actually, I don't think they're all on here. But anyway, so we wanted to basically um, uh, focusing on the Ark region here. So uh, these are the islands that uh, make up the Ark. We've uh, looked into the history of it in terms of um, what the actual, uh, which people are on each of the islands, what they're actually for, and um, just sort of getting excited in terms of like what content that we could actually put down, um, content that fits in with the existing narrative that's uh, already been established um, through ports. Um, and before we, again, this is very, very early days in terms of us just working at what we're going to do. Um, I talked to one of our concept artists um, here who had done some concept art for something, um, not for RuneScape, um, but I really liked it. So this isn't, um, this isn't actually concept um, that we're necessarily going to use, but it was concept art that was done for another project. And I thought the, you know, the colors are great, the sort of the sense of scale, the seeing other ships and seeing islands, I think worked really nicely. So this, just using this as mood art, this is not to say that we're going to build this at all, but th this is just, it's nice talking to, to other artists on site and um, talking to them about what the, you know, uh, what the project could actually end up looking like. So um, we took these concepts out first and we just said, yeah, the Eastern Lands, you know, should be kind of, kind of close to this. Um, there's obviously not as much of a Polynesian Japanese themes, but in terms of the color palette and seeing something uh, bright and colorful and with lots of space where the NXT draw distance can let you see off into the future uh, other islands, we got very excited about. So I'm very much looking forward to doing this. So one of the first things that I did was to um, uh, do a quick, very quick test in, um, in MapEd in terms of just having a look at the NXT engine. Because um, again, like, I hadn't used NXT myself in terms of playing with the lighting very much. So um, let's have a quick look. 
just wait for Mapper to load on the other screen. Yay, cool. So let's load a random square. wait for Mapper to load. Actually, OK, well, I can't remember exactly which square it is, but I can find um, a concept uh, that we quickly bashed together. So here we go. So this was an example map square where we took existing assets that we've already got and just played around with the lighting in NXT. And it's, yeah, it's, um, it's really cool to actually be able to, um, uh, to, to sort of assemble assets and then make areas that are nice and bright and colorful. So doing this now is a very quick like lunchtime um, experiment means that we had we know that we can do something similar um, for NXT um, and for Etherlands, which is really exciting. So I'll show you some of the very quick concepts art that we've got already. Um, so before we requested anything, um, we just kind of got some image reference in terms of the sort of the color scheme and the type of islands that um, we would like. So these are just random sort of uh, you know Google searches in terms of the color and the type. Bamboo obviously needs to feature. Um, but in terms of the sort of the white sandy beaches and small islands, um, these type of things, we would give to the concept art team and say, this is kind of what we're, what we're thinking of. And then the concept art guys would go away and um, create some mood art. And again, we haven't, um, we haven't officially started design, but um, in terms of the art, the mood art, this is um, what we've already started to get back from the concept art team. So one of the requirements we said well one of the island chains they, they're called um, the the islands that once were turtles there's like a handful of islands and like you know what could they look like so um, these uh, ideas are basically um, you know potential solutions for how this could work the scale isn't we're not 100% on um, what the scale would be um, but this is kind of what we're what we're thinking of I've just been told we've only got two minutes I'll be quick right so yes this is the um, some concept of uh, uh, plants and things, so that's something that we're quite excited about. Uh, we talked in one of our brainstorms about having these crabs that would have resources on them that the players could mine. Um, we all thought that was a cool idea, so we just said to the concept guys, you know, go crazy, what do you think we should do for that? Um, and the idea here would be that these guys would scuttle around and you'd have to um, mine them to get the resources. I had some other ideas for crazy turtles. Um, I think we're all thinking the bottom left one would be the one we'd like to do. Um, these are treatments on, uh, on some ships um, in terms of making them look more Eastern Lansy. Um, one of the things I'll show you in a minute is um, some of the ships that we've done graphical improvements of. Um, again, this is just some mood art in terms of different creatures. Um, having the sirens feature more, I think it'd be nice and lots more, uh, uh, getting more about the history and more diversity in terms of um, different siren NPCs that you might encounter. And yeah, so very quickly, uh, hey, there are some ships. So a while ago, we did a graphical update on ships. We haven't launched it yet, but we think um, Eastern Lands could be the project to do that. So um, here's an example of a ship that's currently in game. I think this one's in the tutorial. Um, this one would be, um, this is a, uh, the fishing trawler, a rework of the fishing trawler. Um, we've got another cool galleon here. Um, this is a uh, trader ship. Um, this one has different, uh, there's, I think there's a couple of different versions of this. Um, and then this is one of the smaller ships. Um, that one I think goes to the, uh, the Void Knight outpost. Um, another one here, the Saradominist. And then um, this one here was one of the, I think one of the last um, Crandor designed um, ships. And then here, here's just an, a side, side by side example of the, uh, one of the port ships. So I think I'm out of time, um, but I will finish with one thing. Um, we have started one NPC. Um, just because uh, we've got a uh, mod demo is head on vampires. Um, so we let him do one single new fisherman. Um, so I'll just quickly load that because it's cool. If the, it can find the texture. Which it probably can't. You know what? I'm out of time. I'll have to show you. Oh, hang on. Might be here. Wait a sec. Da. 
I'm going to have to show you next time. Sorry. <laughs> That's it. <laughs>